right, so continuing on with this OptiRough toolpath and now doing some G-code optimization on this file. Uh, but before we do that, I think we ended up the last file where we did slightly compare the cycle times between the two different strategies uh, employed. So our first one was the uh, end mill, solid end mill, doing a large step down, light step over. And I think we realized that our cycle time would be approximately 42 minutes. Uh, so in the previous video, with our high feed cutter, I did overlook one setting. So we calculated with our high feed cutter that we would be feeding at approximately 300 inches per minute. And in these OptiRough toolpaths, uh, the same as the 2D dynamic mill toolpaths work, is when you do a reposition, uh, if you're not doing this rapid retract reposition, it does what's called a micro lift and a back feed rate motion. So basically what it does is it cuts, it does a slight lift and Z, and then repositions without doing a full retract to the next cut. Uh, so previously, uh, in the last video, I had the back feed rate set at the default 100 inches per minute. So that would in fact be feeding slower than what we were actually cutting at, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so if anything, uh, for a fair comparison, this does need to be adjusted, and then we can reevaluate the cycle time and compare apples to apples instead of uh, uh, the way we were doing it before. So I've increased the back feed rate to the same as the actual cutting feed rate. In all honesty, you could ramp this up even more since you're not actually cutting. But given that, uh, let's just look at the cycle times now. So our one inch end mill, again, high step down, light step over, 42 minutes. And then our high feed cutter, um, light step down, heavy step over, about 40 minutes. So there you can see that we're looking at roughly the same cycle time given two different cutting strategies. So now that that's out of the way, um, let's actually look at our tool path. Um, so this, with the, with the one inch end mill, the solid tool, you can see there's obviously less blue lines, that's less tool path, um, because the high feed cutter has to cut everything at each Z level, there's more tool path here. So I'm gonna use just this tool path uh, for the following examples. So as is, no adjustments have been made to this tool path. If I post out some G code and have a look at the result, uh, how many lines of code we're actually going to get. I think we may find that we're getting a little bit too much uh, G code. Okay, so through the magic of video editing, here's our G code right away. Uh, so again, this is just the one operation, just the roughing operation with the high feed cutter. And just looking at our line numbering down the side here for our total file length, I'm just scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And we are looking at approximately 197,000 lines of G-code, which is a lot. Um, that may take up too much room on your controller. Depends on how old your controller actually is as to whether this may or may not fit. Uh, but you may have several programs that you leave loaded in your machine at all times. And you might not have room for a code like this. Uh, not saying that you couldn't just drip feed this code in. That's always an option. Uh, but the other downfall to this is uh, there's a lot of small little movements here. If we look at the distance between that move and this move, it's a very short movement. And again, we're trying to feed at 300 inches per minute. So your machine may not actually be able to execute these lines of code fast enough in order to maintain the feed rate that you've told it to, to actually do. So that's another problem in cycle time, whereas in Mastercam it said 42 minutes. But because of the number of lines of code and the fact that your machine is not able to keep up to it, uh, your machine may take uh, twice as long as what you expected it to just because it can't read code fast enough. So uh, one of the reasons we want to reduce the size of our code is to make sure our machine can actually keep up. And uh, I guess the second reason is to make sure that the code can actually fit on our machine. So that's where we come into options on the arc filtering tab down here. So arc filtering slash tolerance. So the first thing I'm going to look at is tolerance. So on the original toolpath, this total tolerance was set at one thou. Now again, this is a roughing operation. However, we, we kind of skipped over leaving stock with this op, but for, for demonstration purposes, it doesn't really matter. We can just pretend that there's 20 thou of stock on walls and floors and 
the code is going to be basically the same. But if we are roughing this part out, we probably don't need to be super, super accurate with this. All we want to do is get material out of the way um, so we can get to finishing sooner than later. So increasing this tolerance of the toolpath is one option that we have to reduce our G code. However, I think you may see that just by reducing our tolerance from 1,000 to 5,000 has not really changed the toolpath's size very much. So down here, uh, as we mentioned in the previous video, is the NCI information about the toolpath. So this is the original OP14. Uh, we've got basically 16,500 kilobytes of NCI file. Um, increasing the tool tolerance to 5,000 has only reduced that size of that by about 1,000 kilobytes. Um, how that relates to G-code is not going to be a, a very big reduction. So just reducing, or I guess increasing, however you want to look at, the tolerance of the toolpath is not going to really, um, by itself, lead to a G-code reduction or an improvement in uh, machine speed, if that's the issue. So stepping it a little bit further then, um, going back to our 1000 toolpath tolerance and enabling what's called line arc filtering. So line arc filtering, what is that? Uh, there is a little picture here in the help files in MASHCAM that kind of explains what's going to happen here if you turn this on. So in our toolpath, what we can have is um, a toolpath that looks like this, where there's small, short, little segments of toolpath in order to complete the motion. And if we turn on line arc filtering, Mastercam can look at those points and try and fit an arc in there instead of line segments. Uh, and if it fits, it will create an output of a G2 or a G3 instead of what you're seeing over here, which would be uh, seven or eight G1 movements. Uh, movements. So here we've got probably eight to nine lines of G-code versus uh, this is one line of G-code. So the shape of the toolpath is going to be slightly different, um, but we give it a tolerance to basically let Mastercam deviate from this, these exact points by small amounts in order to fit a more fluid, uh, efficient toolpath. So that's what it would do with an arc, and then down here you can see what it, what it may do with a line. So these given points here are relatively straight. Given a certain tolerance, Mastercam can fit one single line through there and output one G1 line instead of seven or eight G1 lines. So as far as what the G code itself would look like, there's a, the points, endpoints of each little segment, unfiltered versus something that would be filtered. So given that, I've turned on line arc filtering for this, this operation. I've allowed it to create arcs in X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z, so it can, uh, for the most part, I think you'll find in toolpaths, the majority of your arcs will be in this plane, uh, the G17 plane. Some controls may not support arcs in 18 or 19, specifically older controls. Um, I've also turned on this down here, enable 3D arc entry motion. So this is turning on helix motions. Again, some controls may not support helix motions, so you may have to leave this turned off. So again, we're still at a 1,000 total tolerance. I've turned on line arc filtering, and as mentioned, we have to give it a value that it can deviate from the exact locations, and that's where we get this uh, arc filter tolerance up top here. So because we are doing an arc filtering uh, tolerance, we do have our initial cut tolerance, which was set up here initially. So now we're taking this total tolerance and dividing it between the cut and the actual line arc filtering itself. So the more tolerance we give to line arc filtering, the more of those, uh, uh, I guess you could say, segments we could see turning into arcs. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. You might want to play with this between more cut tolerance or more filter tolerance, depends on what you're actually getting on the output. Uh, a good starting point, 50-50, will give you an idea of what's about to happen. So given that, you can see what we've reduced this toolpath from uh, 16,500 kilobytes down to 
2500 kilobytes. So that's a pretty big reduction in G code. Uh, if I post this out into G code, we can have an actual look at the number of lines of code that we get. Again, through the magic of uh, video editing, we're here with our program already. And let's again, this is just the one operation. Let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're looking at 31,000 lines of code, uh, quite a bit less than the previous, I think it was almost 200,000 lines. So a lot less code, and you're seeing a lot more G3 outputs this time. Um, this will obviously take up less room on your control when you load it into there. Um, it will also allow your control to feed through the lines much quicker. Instead of having this G3 line being 15 lines of code, it's now just one move to complete that arc. So your control can read the code fast enough in order to uh, get the machine to actually move. So that's filtering. Again, filtering is really uh, useful for reducing uh, the size of G-code, the amount of physical G-code. Um, it will sometimes make a better surface finish, but if the key for your toolpath is better surface finish, then what you're going to want to be using is what's called uh, smoothing. So with smoothing, uh, smoothing is not really, it's not uh, it's typically not used to reduce G-code, but it's really more effective at improving surface finish, uh, although it can reduce the amount of G-code. So here you can see the original toolpath where you, you're getting uh, a shape like this, where there's a lot of uh, back and forth motion between the tool going up and down. It's really jagged. So smoothing is going to try and smooth those, those points out. Um, Again, it's going to look at more than just trying to make one arc. It's trying to make actual fluid motion throughout the toolpath or throughout these specific segments. And the result in this example is less G-code because there is less points, but the main focus is just to create a smoother toolpath. But again, it may not reduce G-code in the end. So there's a visual of what you can expect with smoothing turned on. Something jagged like this, you're going to get a, a surface that's got some jaggedness to it as well. If we smooth out that toolpath, obviously we're going to get a better surface. So typically smoothing will go on to your finishing operations, <clears throat> and you can expect a better finish from it. So even on this, this roughing toolpath, I've gone ahead and turned on smoothing. I haven't turned anything on here. Um, if we turn on this fixed segment length, I would almost guarantee you're going to get probably double, triple, quadruple the amount of G-code that you would uh, already have. So be careful using the fixed segment length. But basically what that'll do is it'll make a line of G-code every 20 thou, no matter what happens. So with it turned off, basically MASHCAM is using its own algorithms to figure out the smoothing settings itself. So I would suggest just enabling, leaving the defaults uh, all disabled and letting it work on its own for the uh, the first few times. So with that toolpath, you can see that the code actually has been reduced. We are looking at less G code, uh, but again, it's going to result in, an, in a smoother toolpath than the original. Uh, to try and have a look at this, I'm going to switch over to. Uh, I'm going to change the view a little bit here. I'm going to turn on display of the endpoints of the toolpath and we'll look at this this area so every little green dot is basically the end of a segment uh, whether that be a line or an arc and here is the original toolpath so that's why you're seeing a lot of outputted g-code there's a lot of little segments in here here is the increased tolerance uh, so again you're, you're not seeing less segments uh, that's why the toolpath wasn't reduced very much with filtering, there's a lot less points. So we're getting bigger motions um, being, or more of those segments are being combined to create one longer segment. With the smoothing, it's still, it's trying to remain within the tolerance that we specified, and it's just smoothing the toolpath. Its focus is not to reduce G-code, but just make the path as smooth as possible. So again, going back to the original, if we go to the analyze toolpath function, 
when we zoom in on these, uh, I'm just going to look at this top arc here. When you hover over a segment with the Analyze Toolpath, you can actually see, let me just turn off the points for a second, what each segment is and how MashCam is actually going to execute it. So there we're seeing small little segments. Let me just zoom in. And we're seeing a G1, another G1, another G1, another G1. If we switch over to our filtered toolpath, so there we're seeing a G2. So now all those G1s are turned into a G2 movement. So that's a good way to get an idea of what your filtering is actually doing for you. So that's filtering and smoothing. And again, we can turn them both on for operations. So we can use filtering and smoothing together. So here I've got my filter set at 50, 50, but this 50% has to be divided into both filtering and smoothing. So I'm set with uh, 25, 25, and 50. Again, just good starting points. You can adjust as needed. So we're gonna get a better, smoother tool passed and a reduction in G code here but you can see that the overall reduction is less than our filtering alone. So we're gonna get a slight increase in G-code, but we may get a better tool path. But in all honesty, for roughing, um, we're overly not too concerned with uh, the surface finish we leave behind. We just wanna get the material out of the way as quick as possible. So then what I've done to try and combine all three of these together, is in this last operation, I've increased my tolerance of my tool path. So I've got a 5,000 tolerance. I've got just my arc filtering turned on. And I'm giving 75% of that tolerance to arc filtering. So 75% of my 5,000 total tolerance is being applied to arc filtering. Keeping in mind, I'm giving it this tolerance because here I am leaving 20,000 stock on the parts. So I don't need to have a tool path that's accurate within a thou. If this tool path deviates by five thou, it's not gonna be a big deal because I'm just getting material out of the way for my finishing operations. And so here you can see the NCI file is now down to approximately 1500K. And if I go and post that out into G code, So here's that G code. And you can see we now finish up at roughly 18,000 lines of code. So originally we were almost 200,000 lines of G code. We're now down to just over 18,000. Um, it is a lot of G code still, but keep in mind this is a, a 45 minute cutting operation. So um, there's not much you can do beyond what we've got so far. Again, you could, you could increase your tolerance even further. Um, and again, you could give more of this tolerance to the arc filter fitting, and maybe you could find a slightly more optimized tool path. Um, but again, that's, that's up to you and in your application. But those are the basic uses of the filtering, the smoothing, and the tolerance with this tool path. Uh, so I think we're going to do one more video in this little um, series of parts here and it's going to be specific to the Haas machines and that would be outputting of the G187 G code with your roughing cycle here to take advantage of Haas's um, high feed rates um, roughing machining uh, mode I guess we can call it. So that'll be in the next video and this will wrap up everything uh, with that third video.